Good morning, my name is Linda Bird, and welcome to worship on this Thanksgiving Sunday. Whether you're here in the sanctuary, with us on Zoom or Facebook, whether you are here in the KW area, or spending your Thanksgiving weekend elsewhere, we hope that you find this time of worship to be one of comfort, inspiration, and spiritual nurture. Let us continue this time of gathering with our responsive statement of welcome. Seeking true commu community, we welcome all who have no church home, need strength, and are seeking deep meaning. Welcome to those who have doubts or who do not believe. Welcome to those whose faith is sure and to those who believe but who are asking large questions. Welcome to people of all ages, colors, abilities, gender and sexual orientations. As we come together in church, we hold one another in gratitude and pray that we will be strong together, faithful together, and loving together. We seek blessing as we welcome the great gift of the Spirit in us, through us, and among us. Come, people of God, to hear the bigger story that accompanies this small story of the moment. This momentary story of anxiety, grief, helplessness, and outrage. Come, people of God, there is a bigger story. It cradles the momentary story in its loving arms. It's a story of abundance for those who will hear it and see it, of a land of milk and honey. For those willing to follow, there is a bigger story. Come and hear the story, your story, our story, God's story. So we begin with the lighting of our Christ candles in this place and in the other places. And the Christ candle in our sanctuary is wrapped symbolically from week to week in the diverse colors of human flesh. The presence of the divine in the human is true in Jesus the Christ and true in all peoples. The flames of our candles are a visible reminder of invisible grace, the light that Jesus brought into the world, the presence of the Holy One made real by our gathering in community, in vulnerability, in curiosity, in our seeking of wisdom. Friends, we are made in the image of the one who exists in relationship. In that spirit, I invite you to share the peace of Jesus the Christ, the one who shows us both our humanity and our divinity in relationship with each other and creation. And so if you are here in the sanctuary, I invite you to turn to your neighbors, shake hands or clasp them in front of you and offer the words, peace be with you and also with you. And if you're online, I invite you to offer the peace to each other using the chat. At this time, any young people that are with us this morning are invited to join me and our helpers downstairs for our Thanksgiving Sunday celebrations. Um, we'll, I will see you a little bit later in the service.
Thank you, cast in bronze. So friends, let's continue our time of gathering with some uh, community uh, announcements. If you have an announcement and you're here in the sanctuary, just come forward uh, to the lectern and then we'll make sure you get your chance. And if you are online, uh, if you're on Zoom, just type it in and I will, uh, I'll read it, I'll read it out. Um, so, so you may have, have noticed uh, the statement of welcome sounded a little different uh, today. Recently, the worship and music committee, after inviting feedback, approved some changes uh, to the statement. So in the weeks to come, you'll be hearing uh, four different versions that we'll be using uh, in our, our services. A reminder to families about our upcoming Halloween party here at the church on Saturday, October 21st from 5.30 to 7.30. A dinner will be provided. There'll be lots of activities to enjoy together and everyone is invited to come in costume that day. So please email Rev Heather to RSVP or for more uh, information. A Parkminster Youth Group meets on Saturday, October 14th. Details are in the WhatsApp. And we also look forward to future gatherings with the other Waterloo United churches. I see Nancy has an announcement. I believe there's a stewardship announcement as well. So Bruce, okay, Bruce is coming. Good morning. Just a couple of uh, short announcements. One is a repeat from about a month ago, but I just want to remind people that there are climate vigils happening every Friday night at eight o'clock um, at Waterloo Town Square. And uh, it's a really good time to gather and reflect on our situation today and listen to um, words of hope from various traditions, um, many faith traditions. A second announcement is about um, an event that's happening at Forest Hill United Church on the 17th of October. That's a week from Tuesday. Um, Kelly Curley from Healing of the Seven Generations is a spirit. Um, a knowledge, knowledge keeper, keeper and he is going to be speaking there and uh, all all are invited, are invited but, but particularly folks, folks from united churches, churches around the, the cities so i'd uh, invite you to join i think it starts at seven it's it's in the um, monthly newsletter that i put out i didn't see it in the whatsapp specifically but i'll see if i can get it there thanks Good morning. Good morning. My name is Bruce, Bruce Mutton. I'm talking, talking to you this morning on behalf of stewardship. I had my speech all prepared at the beginning of the week, and I was going to talk mostly about Jack Reynolds, but I'm not going to do that right now because Shelley read me the email from Heather, and I have to say, in my wife's words, it was a gut punch. So. And then, and then I thought, I thought about, about it again. again. And, and as, as much, much as I understand that, that receiving a call and answering a call are very, very difficult decisions, we know that they are not made without a lot of thought. And they involve a lot of people. Of course, they involve Kieran, and it involved Shadow and, and Sky. So I, I know that I speak for all of us when I say congratulations, Heather. This is a very bittersweet, but good for you. And, um, and we always know that we will be friends uh, and we have a, a congregation who loves you. So I know you're not here to hear this, Heather, but um, maybe you can look at the Zoom thing later. Now, to the real reason why I'm up here. I'm gonna to speak to you, last week, Bill spoke to you very, very eloquently about the history of Parkminster. He talked about um, Sam, Sam Soper, the First Minister, Minister, and all of that stuff. It was fantastic history. Today, I want to talk to you about something else. Today, you're going to hear a little bit about what I do for the church, one of the things that I do for the church. And my job is to fill out applications for grants for the federal government, provincial government, and regional government for our church. Over the past 10 years, we have received over $200,000 in grants from the United, from the federal government, provincial government, and regional government. I'm telling you this because the government doesn't just give out grants lightly. 
They give it to strong, confident, confident, committed, dedicated organizations such as us. What 200,000 and plus dollars have done is taken that out of our budget. For property mostly, uh, it did the labyrinth, it's done the elevator, it's done the lift to the loft, it's done the kitchen, and so on. That takes it out of our property budget. So that's a good thing. The other thing that grants do, the other thing that I want to explain to you is that all grant applications require letters of support. Letters of support from provincial officials, from government officials, from MPs, MPPs, mayors, so on. We receive them every time we put an application in. And the letters are phenomenal. They speak of Parkminster's dedication to their community, their outreach, their leadership. It's amazing to read these letters. And I have to say, it makes me cry sometimes because they are so eloquently written and they are so positive about us. You need to know that because we are such a strong congregation. And we are dedicated to community. So yes, there's a stewardship campaign coming up on the 21st and the 29th of October. And yes, I would love to see you there. I know that we are all doing all we can. Maybe some of us can do more. Those of us that can't, that's okay. You guys are amazing. I'm very, very proud to be part of a very, very vibrant church. I love you. We love you, Bruce. Not seeing any announcements on Zoom. I don't believe there's any others here. And uh, so uh, Deb Sirson is gonna come forward and lead us in our land and territorial acknowledgement. Good morning. Good morning. I'm, I'm Deb Sertsima, and would you join, join me in the responsive reading of our land and territorial acknowledgement? We continue our time of gathering with gratitude and respect as we remember together that this land, this planet, is sacred. We are on holy ground. Earth is our only home, and we are connected with all who live here. In this autumn season, we give thanks for the golden bounty of the harvest. Even as the air cools, significantly last night, the leaves drift and the nights lengthen. Plants die back into the soil, yet in letting go, they are seeding hope. With some seeds falling into the same soil, while others are carried to new places. We lament that we have not honored our deep relationship with the earth. The climate crisis is one result of our overconsumption and waste. We commit to learning and practicing better stewardship. The Haudenosaunee, the Chinatown, and the Anishinaabe have cared for and shared this land for millennia. Generations ago, they welcomed newcomers who entered into treaties with them. We lament that treaties and trust have been broken. We all live with the consequences. We seek to live in relationship with Indigenous peoples with whom we share the land. We ask ourselves, what seeds are waiting to be nurtured? And so friends, I invite us into time of meditation and reflection and if you'd like to close your eyes you're invited to do so a meditation on grace and gratitude and if you're in a place in your life where gratitude feels like an impossible ask know that this is not that season for you Perhaps this is a season for compassion, gentleness, 
righteous anger, acceptance, forgiveness. So I invite you to just sit in the knowledge of your belovedness as a child of God. Remember that we are here by the grace of innumerable gifts. Remember all those who have formed you, nurtured you, challenged you. Remember you are not alone. Remember all that has brought you to this point where you find yourself sitting. Remember. Remember how much of it was pure gift. Having had little to do with your own strength and effort. Remember, we have reached the land of milk and honey. Remember, we have reached the promised land of abundance. Remember, let the gratitude take root in your heart. Allow it to move you to give thanks, to offer praise, to live generously. Allow the grace to wash over you and surrender into the giftedness of life.
Please be seated. As we approach a story from our faith tradition in the witness of the people of Israel in the Hebrew Scriptures, let us listen to the wise and simple words of the poet and pray together to find that wisdom in our story. I go out to the dunes and look and look and look into the faces of the flowers. And then one of them leaned forward and nuzzled my hand. And what can my life bring to me that could exceed that brief moment? For 20 years I have gone every day to the same woods, not waiting exactly, just lingering. Such, Such gifts bestowed can't be repeated. If you want to talk about this, come to visit. I live in the house near the corner, which I have named Gratitude. Friends, let us pray. Holy One, in the hearing of our faith story, in the thoughts, feelings, and questions it evokes, May we find something unearned, a gift bestowed, pure grace for our joy. Amen. The reading from our faith tradition comes from the Hebrew scriptures, from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 7 to 18, from the Inclusive Bible. For Yahweh your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and in the hills, a land of wheat, barley, vines, fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack for nothing, a land where rocks are iron and copper is dug out of the hills. You will eat and have your fill, and you will praise Yahweh your God for the good land given to you. Take care that you do not forget Yahweh by failing to observe the statutes, decrees, and commands that are given to you today. When you have had plenty to eat and have built a fine house to live in, when your flocks and herds, your silver and gold, and all your possessions are increasing, do not grow proud and forget God, Yahweh, who brought you out of Egypt from the land of slavery. It was Yahweh who led you through the vast and desolate wilderness, a thirsty and waterless land, filled with poisonous snakes and scorpions. God made water spring forth for you out of solid rock, and fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your ancestors had never known. God humbled you to test you, and in the end, to make you prosperous. Do not say to yourself, my own strength and the power of my hands brought this wealth to me. Remember God, Yahweh, who enabled you to produce this wealth, to confirm, confirm the covenant that God swore to his ancestors, which is fulfilled today. May the spirit of truth work in these words, that we might be set free. May it be so. That we might be set free. May it be so. Thank you, Linda. When my wife, uh, Andrea, and I are starting our family, 
in the mid-1990s. Um, Barbara Coloroso is the parenting guru of the moment. And one of the main concepts in her best-selling book, Kids Are Worth It, is that of allowing kids to experience the natural consequences of their decisions. In summary, if a situation is not life-threatening, morally threatening, or unhealthy, then you don't intervene. You let kids experience the natural consequences of their actions. So if they forget their lunch at home, you don't drive them to school. Things like that. So it's, it's this concept of natural consequences that comes to mind as I reflect on Moses' pleading speech to the people of Israel. But before we get into the story, I want us to take a little detour and to put this reading into some context. One of the challenges of in, in interpreting the Hebrew scriptures is that we make assumptions about the nature of the material we're reading because of the way it's written. For centuries, Christians have assumed that the book of Deuteronomy is historical material. And amongst the, amongst the scholarly community, that assumption begins to fall apart with the work of Martin Knopf in the 1940s. Without going into all the details, Knopf says that the book of Deuteronomy is not historical reporting, but rather historical interpretation. From the perspective of a writer and editor, in the 6th century BCE. And the events of that time are defining for the nation of Israel. The main city, Jerusalem, is destroyed and the people are sent to live in exile in Babylon, modern-day Iraq. So think about this. The speech from Moses in today's reading is written looking backwards. The writer or editor of Deuteronomy looks at the destruction and the devastation around him and wonders, how did we get here? What precipitated these events? How is it possible? How did we go from the land of milk and honey, the land of Kings David and Solomon, to utter destruction? And exile. And the, and the answer, answer is that, that the people of Israel forgot the, the covenant. covenant. That's, That's the, the gist of Moses' speech, speech, isn't it? Take, Take care that, that you not, not forget, forget Yahweh, Yahweh by failing to observe the statutes, the decrees, and commands that are given you today. Moses' speech of warning reflects what's already occurred. In the eyes of the writer and editor, the people become uh, forgetful, complacent, and ungrateful. And the natural consequence is that the land is lost. The fulfillment of the promise of land, going all the way back to Abraham, is dependent on obedience that flows from faithfulness, from trust. And none of this is possible without gratitude. When you have had plenty to eat and have built a fine house to live in, when your flocks and your herds, your silver and gold and all your possessions increase, do not grow proud and forget God, Yahweh. And it's a message that reaches through the centuries to us 21st century dwellers. The sense of being in covenant with the holy, with the sacred, with the transcendent reality, or simply the holiness and sacredness of people and planet has little sway in our time. And we are losing the land. 
the viability of the earth as our land, our home for us as a species, depends on obedience. In other words, recognizing our limits and the limits of the planet and acting accordingly. And obedience flows from faithfulness, from trust that the planet, that God provides all that we need for life. And faithfulness depends on gratitude. In gratitude, we are the recipients of gifts. We are well provided for, therefore, we can trust. Gratitude is the foundation of all good stewardship. A gift has been nurtured and passed on to us, and we therefore are moved to care for that gift and pass it on to those who come after us. And if all this seems rather basic and self-evident, Consider the opposite. I work for everything I have. No one gives me a thing. I have a right to what I earn and to protect it for my own well-being and the well-being of those for whom I care. Now, which attitude dominates our economic activity? I think it's the latter. We tend to see ourselves primarily as masters of our own destiny, that we have only ourselves to rely on for our own well-being and the well-being of those we love. And there is definitely truth and legitimate pride in hard work and taking responsibility for one's own well-being and that of those we love. There's no doubt about that. But that attitude means nothing. And in fact, it's a dangerous attitude if it doesn't rest on the foundation of a deep gratitude. Albert Einstein was once quoted as saying, there's only two ways to live your life. One is as if nothing is a miracle. And the other, as though everything is a miracle. If nothing is a miracle, then we are simply entitled to everything we work for and can get our hands on. We view creation mostly in terms of how it's used and exploited for our own benefit. And if everything is to be used for our own benefit, then nothing is sacred. And flowing from this, is that we relate to other beings and fellow human beings primarily through the lens of rivalry and competition. Every day, it seems, we are living deeper into the natural consequences of an entitlement that's rooted in ingratitude. But as Einstein and Moses and the author, editor of Deuteronomy make clear, we do have a choice. We don't have to continue on this path. We can choose to live grounded in gratitude. We can choose to live as if everything is a miracle. And the natural consequences of such a choice will be very different. Because a miracle is a gift. The earth and all that is in it is undeserved gift. And to see ourselves as recipients of gifts is to put ourselves in a relationship of trust with a giver. That it's not all up to us. That we are provided for. And grounded in this truth, we look to the creation first, not with an eye to how it can be used, 
but rather with a sense of awe, wonder, and humility. We come to see ourselves as deeply interconnected and interdependent with all that is. And the stance toward life that follows from this, from living in gratitude, from seeing everything as a miracle, is reverence. Reverence for plants, animals, people. Reverence for life. And I think reverence makes all the difference in our politics, in our economics, and in our relationships. Later, in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses addresses the people again with the words God has spoken to him, words of invitation into a sacred covenant meant for us as well. I set before you life or death, blessing or curse. Choose life then. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live a long life in the land which God swore to give your descendants. So on this weekend set aside for the giving of thanks. May God bless us with this wisdom that we may choose life, the life that flows naturally from grace and that's revealed to us when we choose gratitude. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Friends, at the core of a life of faith is to see ourselves as recipients of gifts, to live in the awareness that so much of who we are and what we have is unearned, that we have arrived here on the shoulders of others and by the grace of God. And out of this sense of abundance, we want to give back, to contribute to God's ongoing work of drawing the world together in love. So thank you for your faith and the way it leads you to give generously of your time, of your talent, and of your treasure. With that in mind, let us bring our gifts before God.
What can I do? What can I bring? What can I say? What can I sing? I'll sing with joy. I'll say a prayer. I'll bring my love. I'll do my share. Holy One, great mystery, mystery in flesh, mystery among us. You are generous beyond measure, creating, sustaining, enlivening every day. Our gratitude is beyond measure, so we offer back a small portion of all that has been given to us. Through these gifts, might we, might we cooperate with your lavish outpouring of love for the world. May these gifts and the givers be blessed for this holy purpose. Amen. Please be seated. And so let's continue um, our service by coming together in prayer to share the, the burdens that sit on our hearts this day, but also to share the blessings and the joys on this uh, Thanksgiving uh, Sunday. Rob, would you mind going around with the mic for me? If you have a blessing or a concern that you'd like to share and you're here in the sanctuary, Rob will come to you with the uh, microphone. Uh, if, you, if you're on Zoom, um, just type it into the chat and we'll make sure to, uh, to, to read that out. Uh, we're holding in prayer this day. Uh, some of you may know that uh, uh, Rob Hale uh, had a suffered a heart attack uh, a week or so um, ago. Uh, he's, he's home, he's um, as fine as, as can be, and he's um, awaiting entry into the cardiac rehab uh, program at uh, St. St. Mary's. And so we just hold Rob and Kathy uh, in our prayers this day. As well, we continue to hold uh, Ruth uh, Russell and her family um, at the, at the death of Delbert uh, a couple of weeks ago um, as well. Do we have a question? Yes. I just, I just want, want to say, to say my, my sister, sister is home from the hospital. Uh, she, she is on the mend with many health, health issues, issues, but it's, it's coming. coming. And my health issues are also uh, coming along nicely. So uh, much thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah, I meant to mention this when I was making my stewardship announcement this morning, but one of the letters of support on my recent application on behalf of Parkminster came from the food bank. And they shared some really interesting information and, and fabulous information. Since 1993, Parkminster has contributed $21,000 to the food bank and 6,000 pounds of food. So that is amazing and congratulations. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks. This is a bit unusual, but two very positive political things happened in Canada this week on Tuesday. Uh, we had our first black person elected as a speaker of the House of Commons. And in Manitoba, we have our first Indigenous Premier. So sometimes we do make progress. <laughs> Thank you, Jim, for, sh for sharing that. Yes. You got to run. <laughs> uh, yeah. Laura. Unfortunately, this isn't progress. This is more of the same. There's um, a lot of devastation in Israel and the Palestinian territories. and. Uh, yeah, so, so huge, huge concern. concern. This is the heart and soul of three major faith traditions, and it's really difficult to watch what happens there so frequently. Thank you, Laura. It's weighing on a lot of our hearts today. 
Nancy? Nancy? Oh, uh, uh, Rob and Nancy, Nancy there, as long as you're going by. Yes, it is on. Um, um, I'm, I'm thinking, thinking this Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving weekend about families, families for whom it's, it's a really a difficult, difficult time. time. Um, I have a, a good friend who is nearing, who's in the last few weeks of her life, and so their family is having to um, come to terms with that with her, and it's, it's quite comp complex. And also a good friend's father is, um, as she says, actively dying. So these families are going through Thanksgiving at a time when it might be difficult to find. Um, to give, to give thanks, thanks and, and also, also probably, probably uh, are experiencing a deep, deep gratitude um, on many levels. Thanks. Thank you, Nancy. I would just like to give thanks that after uh, four to six weeks of flurried activity, my 95 year old aunt is safely. Uh, at, Victoria at Victoria Place, Place in, in town, town and we're grateful, grateful that, that she's much closer to us and uh, that, that we can visit her a bit more often. often. So thanks, thanks for that. Uh, Rob, Rob Kevin, Kevin uh, in the Kevin, Kevin Smith, Smith in the corner there. there. If you have, have one of those watches, watches with a step, step counter. counter. <laughs> Hi, I'd uh, like to ask for your prayers um, about the um, increased uh, homophobia and uh, transphobia that's been uh, experienced uh, through the region. Um, yeah, in some of my recent conversations with uh, Elijah, he's uh, experienced a lot of incidents in the uh, shelter system. Um, also, our local public school board has been um, under re relentless attack from um, from uh, people that oppose their uh, direction with um, equity. Um, we have started a, started a petition to support the school board, and the uh, link to that is available in the WhatsApp. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah I'd just, just like, like to ask, to ask for your, your prayers for that. Thank you. We have another. I think, I think it's, it's uh, one for customer members. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rob, I really don't have an announcement. I just wanted to see how fast you could run. <laughs> So friends, I, on this day where um, uh, everyone uh, received the email about uh, Heather uh, moving on come, come the new year, I just want to express my gratitude um, for, uh, for Heather's gifts and for her, for her, her presence uh, with all of us um, over the last um, six years or so and um, very personally with me in team ministry it has been a joy and a delight to be with her in uh, in team in, in team ministry and there will be an opportunity for further thanks as the as the weeks and the months go by but uh, i just wanted to lift that up on this day as well and so friends let's uh, gather these prayers together and uh, and to ground, I invite us to ground them um, in the words of this short reflection that I draw your attention to. Well, gratitude is the capacity to recognize the abundance of gifts that surround us. So gratitude it's not, not an incidental, incidental thing. thing. It's, it's not, not an optional thing. thing. It's, it's not, not something, something nice, nice that we happen, happen to do in order to make our lives better. But, but if this, the, 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 the central, central vision, vision 
of the monotheistic hope that is expressed in Judaism and Christianity and in all of its forms and in Islam. The, the, the central hope of those texts, of those traditions, is that of table. It's about feasting eternally. This is why we have the Passover meal. This is why Jewish festivals are all based around harvest celebrations and God's abundance. This is why Christianity has the Eucharist. This is why Islam has Ramadan. Is that you fast in order to experience the depth of gratitude of the feast that the, the most profound religious vision, the one that has often eluded us most substantially, is the core thing, is the core idea is that God has gifted the universe with everything. We sit around a table and the first words of awareness, the first words of our lives should always be thankful. Thank, thank you. Or I'm so grateful. Then of course we think about the table of our lives. If the first words are thank you, so the last words are also thank you. Gratitude is the primary moral framework of life in God. Let us pray. To wake from sleep into this day is gift enough for thanks. To hear a child's delight and laughter is gift enough for thanks. To sip a glass of clean, cold water is gift enough for thanks. To share a moment with a friend is gift enough for thanks. To smell the fragrance of moist soil is gift enough thanks to form the words that make a prayer is gift enough for thanks for every breath we take for every beat of our hearts we give thanks holy one for the ear that listens for the hand that caresses for arms that reach out in love. We give you thanks, O God. For relief from pain, for the tears of shared sorrow, for the laughter of shared joy, we give you thanks, O God. For the freedom to choose, for the ability to love, for the power of hope, we give thanks, O oh God. Holy One, today and all days, heal us from the disease of entitlement. Open us to wonder that we may marvel at all that is given to us, that we may reject the lie of scarcity, that we may share generously and abundantly, that we might grow in faith and joy. And now in the silence of our hearts, we reflect on the people and situations that have touched us this week and surrender our very personal prayers of blessing and concern.
Ina, Ina, Ina. We have enough. We are enough. May this be our mantra. May this be our politics. May this be our economics. May this be our community life. May this be our first thought on waking and our final one at the end of each day. Amen. Friends, our final hymn this morning is number 229 in your Red Voices United, God of the Sparrow. Please rise as you are here. Good morning, please be seated. Well, what a week this has been. A week of announcements and cha of change, but today is a day to give thanks. Over this weekend, we will spend time with families and those who feel like family. To me, that's what this congregation is all about. We live with the attitude of gratitude, but also one that experiences changes. This week through a congregational email, we have heard of an upcoming change in pastoral relations as Reverend Heather begins steps towards another congregation. I'll just read the one paragraph. It says, with a heart filled with joy and sorrow, and these are Heather's words, I write this letter to you today is with, with mixed emotions that I share the news that I have requested a change of pastoral relationship from Park Ministry United Church, Waterloo, to embark on a new journey with Norval United Church, Georgetown, in January of 2024. This transition is not one I take lightly as the relationship we have formed and the ministry have shared together is deeply cherished. My time at Parkminster will conclude at the end of December 2023, with Heather's final service being with us on December 24th, so the Christmas Eve service. So we know we have been blessed by Heather's presence here at Parkminster over the past six years, and the new congregation will also be blessed by her presence in the new year. 
if you've not received this letter or the congregation or the letter from the council, please contact the office and they can send that to you. That we sent out two, there were two letters sent out this week. And I think it's important that you read both Heather's letter and the letter from the church council and that they're read in their entirety. Between now and the end of December, we will experience a time of grieving for this change. A time of mourning. All of which is valid. But we will not live in this time. Both Reverend Heather and Reverend Joe have shared many gifts and will continue to do so in these upcoming months. But we need to move into a time of wonder and curiosity in the next steps. This congregation is very active and there's a lot going on. We are in the midst of the stewardship campaign, as Bruce has mentioned, where the many items in this congregation we are very thankful for, they will be highlighted. We also continue to be in conversation with Trinity Center's foundation to determine what the next steps might be in the possible future of Parkminster and the, and the land. The council will soon begin working with the Regional Council Western Ontario Waterways to review the ministry needs and prepare to take the next steps for this congregation in the future. This congregation is a vibrant one who very much depends on the volunteers that we have working in the various roles. And on behalf of the council, I'd like to express our deepest gratitude for any who work in volunteer roles here at Parkminster. We appreciate each moment that you work, spend work on behalf of this community of faith. We remember that the ministry and mission of Parkminster is Christ's ministry, entrusted to us as Christ's body. Our ministry belongs to Christ and is ongoing. The future, while it will be different, we move forward with the commitment to each of us that we will be part of this ministry. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. And, and blessings, blessings on your days. days. Friends, our worship, friends, our worship has ended. The light now burns in each one of us. May it fuel generosity and gratitude. Heather, Parkminster friends, as we stand at this intersection of farewell and new beginnings, may our remaining time together be filled with the spirit of wisdom and truth as we reflect on our ministry together. May this be a time of honest grieving, heartfelt farewells, overflowing gratitude, and sincere well wishes. Heather, may God bless you with all that may strengthen and encourage you, empower you in the months ahead. May God bless you with words of gratitude and love from those whose lives you have touched. May God bless you with leave taking that prepares you for what is ahead. Friends, in these final moments of our shared journey, may we cherish the moments that we have. May we hold fast to the bonds that unite us. Let us be a source of support and encouragement to Heather as she prepares to continue her ministry elsewhere. So friends, go in peace to live all faith outside this place of worship, that through the healing and the wholeness of gratitude we may find ourselves at home wherever we may be. And as we go out, let us sing our faith in the presence of the Spirit in all of life's passages. She comes sailing on the wind, her wings flash.
Flashing in the sun On a journey just begun She flies on And in the passage of her flight Her song rings out through the night Full of laughter, full of
Yeah, good idea. <laughs> Give me a, keep on laughing. <laughs> 